are all tied up here at the AHC as we have Team Liquid and the Playing Ducks facing off. And Team Liquid pulls out an unorthodox composition. It works out with silences and they use a guard all over the battleground and pull it out on Brax's holdout. But can they do the same going into game number three? Let's figure out which battleground we're going to. Caldor, can Team Liquid win a straight up match though against Playing Ducks if they were to play their old style? I think they can. I mean, Team Liquid has shown on game number one that they are even with the Ducks here, or the other way around, depending on how you want to look at it. The Ducks now have first pick, and Team Liquid therefore goes into the map choice again. They pick a map that is actually really strong for the Ducks as well. Team Liquid and the Ducks have mm -hmm. both really excelled on Towers of Doom, but Team Liquid basically just saying, we are better. And I think they can win a straight-up game. It's just a matter of coordination and discipline towards the late game. We saw close game one, Game two, the strategy came into play, but this is definitely going to be it's an exciting series so far, and I think the rest of it is going to be very similar. Let's see if the series continues to deliver here as we go to game number three on Towers. Now let's think about what picks could be picked up. Abba, they're always strong on this battleground. Been seeing a lot less Vikings from Team Liquid as of late. They seem to go a little bit more into what you would normally expect on this battleground. We will probably see... The Hungering Arrow build once again from the Playing Ducks are good with it on this battleground. And it's great for controlling those sappers on the bottom side. Ethernal able to control the top lane and the middle lane. But the Playing Ducks come out, they open up the map, and we once again will not see the Vikings here. Yeah, Vikings band out immediately. The Ducks know that Liquid likes to play them on Cursed Hollow and on Towers of Doom. So they are trying to make sure that they're not getting outplayed with a macro again. Now, Team Liquid thinking about a ban on Tassada. Again, on this map, you think about the Haka ban, ETC ban, you think about Tassada, but there's also Vala to consider, which the Ducks really love to play. Banning Tassada makes sure that the Ducks at least cannot bring Tassada Vala compositions into the game. Mm -hmm. But overall, it, I mean, it has been a close series so far, and there's so much on the line here. You have to really take your time and think this through. And he also, any possible bans that could come out if they weren't facing the playing ducks could be the Dahaka. Uh, however, if you do that, you do give them the ETC right away. You don't have an option to open it up. So moving into the Tassadar allows for that soft ban that you were talking about to come in, but also leaves two of the strongest heroes that we currently see picked up. Now I'm kind of curious to see if playing ducks are going to move straight into the Vala on their first pick right away. They don't really have to because they have a second and third slot to move into it, but Team Liquid could make the play on themselves here to play their own Vala. Now here's the problem. If you take Vala, then Liquid has an opportunity to take ETC and Dehaka, exactly. or they can simply go for Regacom. So we see Abatha instead coming out. I don't think that the Ducks have to get Vala. Chris is great on Vala, and if given the chance, I think they will always opt for it. But at the same time, you don't want to sacrifice too much to get Vala, since Chris is not a one-trick pony that can only play one hero. But we still see the same scenario that I just described coming into play after Abatha was taken. And Team Liquid is reacting with ETC and Dehaka as a pick, so they can run ETC as the main tank, can go into Mosh Pit, Dehaka is getting the side soak, and will try and apply the pressure to Abatha. So they need to get a melee assassin. Typically, you do have that with the Abatha, something that allows for you to. Uh, really pull off what Abathar gives you, which is the ability to control fights. You're able to win the one-on-one -on -one fights really well, so Odin is definitely a good choice here if they want to move into that. Could also see uh, potentially Genji, Arthas. Genji, Jaina is an old one that's been popping in. We don't have the new Jaina in yet, but usually you want to have that ultimate evolution clone coming in. Seen a lot of Arthas too as of late. Yeah. Also, Rega is another great copy. It's actually an, an, an estimated copy by most players out yeah. there. A double Rega in a team fight offers a lot since you yeah, can still rely on your bite, so you can just like jump in, get a bit of burst damage in. You have the lightning shield, you have heals. Rega overall is a copy that we've seen in a lot of team fights on the professional level. And they have Rega already taken and they have Vala, so they already have something they can copy, but we would still expect them to add something else, even if it's just an Arthas at the front line. Double Arthas can be extremely annoying to play against. Hovering the Johanna ban. Been seeing a lot of Johanna, especially against an ETC. Gives you a little bit of control, gives you that strong front line, makes it a bit harder for ETC to get the age they want. So it becomes more of a peel off who controls and helps their hyper carry the most. Johanna allows for that to happen. See if that ban will be coming in. Also, it's one that we've been seeing a lot from Nande. He plays a lot of the Johanna. And so now we're starting to get to a spot where we might see that Arthas from him instead. Yeah, it's interesting that Johanna gets banned out. I wouldn't have expected that. The reasons that you mentioned are all absolutely valid. We love to play it, it's great, but at the same time, I didn't really think that they would respect Johanna to an extent where they say, okay, we have to pick her here now. So, I'm wondering if they are preparing for something else now, but I guess what you said is probably right, that they just feel it's a big, big pick for the Ducks, and they're trying to take it away from them, which would force more or less something along the lines of a Mirrodin or maybe an Arthas here. 
For Team Liquid, of course, we still need some damage. We have Greyman on the table. We have Li Ming that can still be played. In terms of support, Stukov would not be too bad either if you want to go into a double. Uh, which actually is going to be quite likely now with Karazim taken. We could see the double support. Stukov is great since he also robs the uh, Sappers from the ability to explode onto towers and the core. So that would be another hero that could be picked up. But it's time for the Ducks to reveal how they want to round their composition off. What's going to be the frontline here for them? I'm really expecting that Arthas from them. And then, of course, you need someone to handle Eternal's job here, which probably could be a Sonya to pick up the Arthas. Get a strong top lane, able to bully out that Dahaka. Malfiel is also available. Yeah. And you can clone a Malfiel. He's pretty decent. He's able to proc off the Reaper's Mark on his uh, ally that pops up there. It's going to be Arthas and Murden, actually. I like that they have two heavy tanks because if you run into Cursed Bullet and then uh, level 16 damage from Karazim uh, with the way of 100 fists, it's just extremely easy to burst one target down. So if you have to retreat, you still have a second tank at the front there for you. But yeah, heavy front line for them, for sure, trying to create the space for um, Vala. And as we said, Arthas and Rhaegar are both great targets for an Apatha copy. question is really, what is Liquid now going to do? Do they run Karazim as a solo heal? Do we get a second one? If we do get a second one, I would say we have Stukov now in play, but they could still also add just simply additional damage to that setup. I think thinking they need a little more damage. I mean, it depends on what Hazo is playing here. You could, for example, look for another hero for Hazops and simply shift that around, and uh, we have Gul'dan taken. I could have seen a variety of heroes here, even yep. Li Mingyi maybe being popping in again. But at this point, just simply heading into Gul'dan, he already offers a lot, and you can again play around Horrify. I wouldn't have mind Hasu Abs' Tychus there, too, for that fifth pick. Actually, against what is currently up for the playing yeah. Ducks. Would have been pretty good to burn down that front line. Also, it makes the ultimate evolution come in. You can disengage. You have Odin for poke. Uh, but we're going to get the Gul'dan instead. So at least now we have the Horrifies in, and we also have the Felflame Cloaks to stop the altars from being channeled. I would actually agree. I think Tychus in this setup would have been pretty good. You have heroes at the front that can definitely protect him, mm -hmm. and then you can simply try and burn down Murder and burn down Arthur. So you're going to get a lot of damage in here pretty quickly. So that would have been another option for them. But right now they are playing that with a hero that has the wave clear available to him. Uh, with Gul'dan, you just always have so much wave clear overall. You have the AOE poke from a distance, and you have Horrify then as a great tool. So another good hero for them. And yeah, one of these two teams obviously is going to take the lead in the series right now. And it could be either one. So far, they have been pretty close in games. And in the standings, I mean, it's the battle that we've been waiting for the entire weekend. That it is. And I'm actually hoping for some aggressive Team Liquid in the early game. I want to see Dahaka burrowing from the top lane down to invade mercenary camps with his team if it's available. With Abathar being on the field here, you have those plays. And I want to see Team Liquid push the limits. Let's go ahead and go into game number three here. That's Team Liquid. And the playing ducks are facing off. We're going to see who will take the lead in this best of five series. Game on on Towers of Doom. Splendor and Karazim for Team Liquid. The German Bulgarian setup with Blumby on ETC. The series is tied as we're heading into game three with Hazops on Greymane, Dartmok on Dehaka, and last but not least, Nurok on Gul'dan. On the right side, in the red, Chris playing Vala, already moving into that Monster Hunter. Nande picking up the Murden, Wolf Joe playing Rhaegar, Sport Billy on Abathur, and Eternal playing Arthas. Eternal on Arthas, as expected here. And this is going to be, again, an important match. Liquid has actually accomplished a lot by winning the last map. If the Ducks ha would have taken the 2-0 lead, then the momentum they gain is incredibly difficult to beat. Now, on the other hand, one of these two teams will be able to set themselves ahead slightly into a position where they only need to win one additional map. Prog Rock on the side of ETC. We have now third win taken for good old Muradin. So Nanda even playing a little bit more around his passive, trying to make sure that if he eats poke during uh, fights on the, on the altars, that he can just simply retreat from the fight for a few seconds and then rejoin the battle with enough hit points to make a difference. Watching Team Liquid as they rotate between lanes, clearing them out as quickly as possible, trying to get their opponents to come answer back. Nande is by himself, does get knocked back after he's in Dwarf Toss. Can they get the kill here? They're body blocking well. Blumby looking for it, and yes, the kill comes in. Team Liquid bringing out some aggression. Super aggressive here, but also sacrificing experience in the mid lane. We have Karazim moving in and trying to make sure that he can pick at least some of it up and that ha works out. And uh, the bigger part is that Team Liquid in the meantime moved down to the bot lane and uh, destroyed a tower. 
And also the Ducks missed out on EXP because they lost, of course, their hero. So uh, that was a big part. The rotation on their end was a bit slower. So Liquid gets away with a slightly lean experience. And a good kill, applying pressure already early on. Iron Fist being picked up by that Karazim. Love when you get that wave of 100 fists at level 16. You just proc it, dropping down damage on your opponent. If they can find a Horrify on the Vog and see that Karazim help get kills. A lot of people lately have been asking about Insight versus Iron Fist and what it brings to the table. Iron Fist is immediate value. You get movement speed, you get great damage procs in the early game, helps you out in the early game as well for fighting. Insight takes a bit too long to finish the quest. If you're able to get done pre-10, sure it could be a good pickup, but it does make you walk away from your team, which means they're missing on heals and potential kills. So Iron Fist is usually the go-to that you're going to see a lot of the time. Yeah, and I don't think I've ever seen on a high pro level game anything else but Iron Fist taken yeah. since that has become the norm. And so that was the entire year. Transcendence used to be the, the, the pickup, but that was ages ago, and ever since the changes, it's all about Iron Fist. You're trying to get the extra damage in against single targets in particular. Now, the teams have both started with level 4 now, and uh, we have uh, an exchange in tower shots, and all the shots, but all, uh, oh, last one is being grabbed to the top lane, so we see a kill against Arthurs, but when it comes to the objective, the Ducks get the slight lead, thanks to Abathur being the one up at the top lane that channels through the last altar. So, Liquid is ahead slightly when it comes to map control. But from the objective point of view, the Ducks are taking the lead. And an attempt to go for another kill here even, but Nanda is able to get the Dwarf Toss over the Shrub in and therefore is able to escape. Despite playing Ducks having the lead here in terms of core shots, I'm loving what I'm seeing from Team Liquid. I like this aggression coming out from them. Getting a couple of kills could be a bit more efficient in the wave clear, but I love seeing them aggressive. They were known for this. This is what Team Liquid was all about. This a team that sees an opportunity, seizes it immediately, and takes heroes down, that has quick rotations on the map, opens up options, and that is what they were so infamous for and what they excelled at. Right now, they are just a shadow of their former self, but this game, at least the early game, looks way more than what we're used to from them. They lose Gul'dan though, but it looks like they might be able to get a counter kill, and they actually don't. Eternal is able to walk out of harm's way, not getting dropped here, so Liquid losing Gul'dan to the rotation of the playing ducks and the control they have. Great collapse there by the playing ducks. Also good awareness from the Aether coming in with a hat at the last second to make sure Eternal stays alive. And Team Liquid will take a hit on their side in terms of characters. Now they need to work on grabbing the mercenary camps. But with playing ducks, possibly exploring the idea of evading, Team Liquid pulls away as they have to wait for Nurok. Double altar on the map now. We're still seeing the Haka in the top lane gaining value for the team. So this is really the moment where Abathur is going to try and counter soak him as much as he can. But with the level 7 talents, we have a big power spike for Vala in particular, thanks to the repeating arrow. But we're also now, of course, is seeing the cocktail build so far at least completed by Greymane. And the Echo Paddle on ETC is going to make a huge difference here. So this is going to be a pretty big fight from the two teams. Abathur taking the middle of the top lane, by the way, already soaking with his body now as well as with the symbiote. Yes, playing Ducks are hoping here to get a one-for-one -one trade, but also just to harass long enough so Abathur can get more value and soak that experience, where Team Liquid is hoping to grab the ultra right away and then rotate in and try to force a fight. The fight coming in, though, is the playing Ducks go in and apply some damage to Splendor. He gets pretty darn low on health. We'll be able to group up and get some heals out soon, but now it's about the dance of the altar. Who will get the first kill and who can be killed here from Team Liquid? They need to find a pick or get someone low enough to where we stop seeing the playing Ducks disrupt, disrupt them. Actually, Ducks just run away. Yeah, they move away right now. And the Haka is actually starting to chase Abathur at the top lane. And Abathur is barely getting out of this, burrowing behind the wall, so Sport really, really paying attention. And Abathur, of course, is one of the main reasons why we find ourselves in a situation where the Ducks are willing to walk away because they realize that their big power spike is coming after level 10 when they finally have the ultimate evolution available to them. Almost a kill there on the top lane. Nande missing out on Stormbolt. Dahak is able to get away due to it. In fact, they almost turned around the fight, but Ducks do get away. 32 to 28, Team Liquid is leading. They have Sappers pushing on the bottom side and they're controlling the battleground, but a level and a half away from that 10, when we have Abathur come up with that ultimate evolution and we'll see our team start to actually compete. Yeah, at the top lane, Dark Mog is now delivering the experience that they need. Ab Mule is also being picked up, by the way. That's another big tool that can be used later on if you don't commit to taking structures down uh, quite that heavily. For now, Plumbi is just peeling for the team. It's one of the biggest strengths of ETC overall that you have great peel tools with face melt available to you and that's something that they definitely need to utilize here. We also see the Haka delivering more experience to Team Liquid, so the goal is to hit level 10 faster than your opponent. 
But Abathur is doing a fantastic job to keep the playing ducks in experience range, thanks to that soaking that we're seeing through the symbiote. His mines have also been really annoying for Team Liquid. They keep moving in for an invade, but playing ducks see it every single time a mine pops up. Eternal doing well against Dark Mock in the top lane with the Dahaka, but he's not going to be able to take too much in terms of delivering a lethal takedown. Sappers grabbing the playing ducks are pushing on the bottom side, and we might see the playing ducks actually get 10 first as it's about to hit, but Team Liquid is right behind him. Yeah, and now we have 20 more seconds until your altar spawns, so it's all good at least for now. Arthur's is waiting with his ult with Shock Meteor Season Ragosa here, to be quite frank. The survivability seems to be the thing, and that's happening again. Army taken. Palm on the side of Splendor. Makes perfect sense. They have solo Karazim for the heals. They have the damage output, so there's no real need to head into anything else. And we're seeing Mosh Pit, Cursed Bullet, and of course also Gul'dan again working around the Horrify, trying for an engage here. So all in all, things are looking good at this point. And let's see if they can actually make it because Hazops finds himself in trouble, but he dodges the Reign of Vengeance as they are going for Eternal. The Ancestral keeps him alive. The Ancestral keeps him alive, still on the front side. We do have the Splendor getting focused down. On the right side, does drop in the Palm right on top of Blumby, but Blumby will die anyway. Splendor dashes back towards his teammate with Dark Mox using Essence to heal up. Now the clone has been dealt with, but playing Ducks continue to have four healthy members. They'll go ahead and fight back, grab the altar, and there's four more shots going to Team Liquid's core to tie up the game. That was great heads up play by the Ducks. The palm was actually good. It was not a bad palm. ETC tried to heal himself up at the same time. That was a bit of an issue, but in most cases, this palm would have still been triggered. But the Ducks immediately moved away from ETC. Unfortunately for Blumby, his cooldowns did not come back up in time for him to slide out and save himself. But that was a very good kill by the Ducks here. Yeah. Incredibly well reacted once they saw that Splendor was trying to save him here. Blumi didn't really get a chance for a decent mosh pit here either. So it was a pretty interesting move and it results in both of the teams having the same amount of points on the core here. So that Alter going over to the playing Ducks equalized the standings. I really enjoyed the flank as well, the double art that's coming up from the side. And Arthas flanking and getting on top of a target is usually where you're going to see that team fight open up and get you a victory. So, solid opening there from the playing Ducks. As we're going to have the Sappers grabbed on the bottom side, the soaking continues for both of our teams as we get closer to level 12. But the game is all tied up. And this has been a great series so far. The playing Ducks and Team Liquid seem to be very evenly matched. Yeah, they definitely are. And there's a lot of things that contribute to it. We've been talking about the Ducks and their potential for a long, long time that they don't really seem to show up with the same level of play against, let's say, weaker teams or direct competitors than they do against top teams. And I feel right now they're doing exactly that finally. They know also how much is on the line here for them. And with Team Liquid, of course, being in a position where they also desperately need a victory here, it's just absolutely cool to see how concentrated and disciplined both of the teams are playing. They're dancing around the bottom side. They both know that altars will be spawning soon, but they also want to control the bushes on both the respective camps. And there is the altar spawning in 25 seconds on the bottom side. Tahaka already pushing the top lane, willing to rotate in. Team Liquid should be able to move in. And look how both teams are controlling the chokes on their respective side of the battleground. Very well done here with the altar spawning in. It's also about the 13 right now. You want to make sure that you get your 13 as fast as you can so that you have it available for the altar fight. It's one altar. Arthur's already in the bush here. Abathur has taken the top lane. Another wave destroyed. And uh, the ducks are on 13 slightly faster. So the Haka is trying to deliver the experience by clearing another wave in the middle. But here comes the double Arthur's play already. Altar is channeled. And yeah, the fear delivers the copy into their hands, but they have not really gotten anything just yet. The isolation on Rega is nice, but they want Eternal. Do they get him though? Nanda jumps in, pops the avatar, has the healing static active, of course, now, and the fight continues. But Blumby is dropping, gets healed here. Everybody grouping up so Splendor can get the heal through. But at the same time, the Ducks are pushing them back once more. Eternal and Nande are just controlling oh. that front line with the Army of the Dead finally being dealt with. We do see an engage from Team Liquid. The Drag connecting both on Arthas here, looking for the fight. And Blumby was ready for the power slide in, but there's just too much control. The playing Ducks walk away with the altar and a better team fight. Also, another thing to quickly highlight is that we don't have Proc Rock completed yet. So there's a lot of quest talents that really haven't hit yet. For example, Proc Rock is on 13 out of 20. We have 29 on the, the Echoed Corruption, so another 30 at this point. So another 10 until this is going to hit. And also the Enhanced Agility is not quite ready yet. So Team Liquid is going to get quite a few power spikes here once that they get ready and complete these talents. 
playing Ducks looking for a fight on a bit of an early side here that was not expected from Team Liquid, but they get the disengage they want. Playing Ducks will take the Constellation Prize and grab the Sappers on the left side and allow them to push on the bottom. They can grab their own soon as well. But I love these flanks, these attempts to hop on top of Neurok. The Ducks are definitely keeping the pressure up. They definitely do. They definitely make sure that it's very difficult for Team Liquid. And also, these n nest traps are very, very annoying that are being put out by Abathar all the time. Blumi is already a bit low, but the fight is starting up again. Here's the Horrify, and that could be their money shot, but the Ancestral goes through. Eternal isn't safe yet either, though, as Blumby is trying to slide back here. Darkmog also might be in a bit of trouble, dodging the Rain of Vengeance and the Howling Blast. Another heal from Splendor comes through, but we once again walk away with both teams not losing a single member. It's two kills against two, 24 against 28 points on the core in favor of the playing Ducks. And it's time for the three altar phase to pop on up. Ultimate Evolution will be here in one second, so we'll see that here from Abathur. It's actually healing up for 70, so both the tanks have to be a bit careful as they wait for the heroics. 40 seconds for Army of the Dead. Three members are on the bottom working on the altar while Abathur goes to the top right to channel his altar up while Dehaka does the same on the other side. Abathur and Dehaka both with the channel. Norok, Norok in trouble. The Mosh Pit saving him for now. The interrupt coming through. Lumbi not trying to hit too many targets here. He's just desperately trying to keep Gul'dan alive. That's what the Mosh Pit was used for and it worked. But now of course they can't rely on uh, ATC's heroic ability any longer. But thanks to Abathur, yeah, thanks to every, actually everybody on the side of the Ducks already using their cooldowns. It was a decision made by PD to just walk away from this, sacrifice the third altar, and now we're completely tied again when it comes to hit points on the core. Kaldor, can you feel it? The 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 hair on your neck is standing up at how intense it is it's right crazy, now. It's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, like I just feel how like close and evenly matched these two teams are. It's so it's so good. Twenty to twenty at the moment, both fighting. Not to fall to the seventh spot there for the Crucible. The Plain Ducks wanting to move up. Team Liquid not wanting to fall down, but they Nanda. find possibly a kill. Nanda gets picked by Team Liquid. Muradin is now dead, and that's a five versus four advantage for Team Liquid. But yeah, they are incredibly close. I absolutely agree. And it's not only this map. Every single map we've seen so far, they fight for every single inch of the map. They are not giving up anything. They are always trying to make sure that they are pushing slowly ahead. And this is exactly what we expected from the series. This is what we wanted to see here. And both teams are absolutely delivering right now. Liquid has the 16. They move to the bot lane. Abatha has Mule, so if they commit to this, they have to take it. The Zappas are moving in right now. And with the Zappas now on the way, the immediate copy is being pulled out by Abatha, saying we have to defend somehow because if they get the... Uh, mercenaries through, then we're going to lose out on the Bell Tower. Abatha is not going to be able to use the Mule here, but it seems as if Team Liquid is trying to push this in even a little bit further. Plain Ducks will be able to defend their Bell Tower and stop the three Sappers. The Mule comes out to heal it on up. With two Ultras activated the top left and the top right, that will be the next spot for our teams to fight. Team Liquid is looking like they want to move in here on this invade. Arctis is on the side for a flank, but remember with the Ultimate Evolution clone being down, nah. that's why they risked it. Good guys, Team Liquid. Go in, take a camp down, and then walk away from it and give it over to the flank. So helpful. Yeah. I actually think they could have fought here, but I guess one of the thought processes was that they are attempting to get a better position for a double altar play. You have the Haka already nearly getting through with the channel on the left side, and he can always burrow in. So yeah, they try for the double, especially since Abatha doesn't have his copy ready. He used it in the earlier fight already. Seeing them jump in, there's no rock isolation used on Vala. They're moving in again, Nanda low, as they try to take down the army. But Abatha actually has the cooldown back to business now, and the double Arthas play is being made once again. Moshpit is ready though as well. Moshpit ready, will Blummy be able to get it? He is low on health, Sport Billy on the clone does get taken away. Wolf Joe is working on the channel, Chris in the top it. right, taking damage. Assessor healing will connect, Blummy finds time. a Mosh Pit. There it is, they get two mm -hmm. members. Bala is down, so is Murden and Rhaegar, and Team Liquid clean up a fight. They clean up the fight and they don't even go for the altar. They are actually trying to make sure that they get a bell tower first. And that was great play with the mosh pit here. Going into the shrub, playing with the vision, and then activating it in there as the rest of the team already jumped on Bala herself. And now they easily get the one up at the top. Arthas is going to go for the trade at the bottom, but Dartmoor has timed the channel appropriately, so they are going to get five shots fired 
over to the opponent's side, and they make the play of the boss. Moving in for the boss. Here is that fight. Watch Chris in the top right. Hoslops finds the angle. He goes in. The Ancestor Hilly even popping out, but with the Mosh popping in, Splendor and Greymane destroy Vala. The Mosh Pit holding two members down. Team Liquid focuses appropriately, and they get the pickup and even grab four shots on the core due to a boss. Yeah, that was just a huge barrage that they just fired. So they got in total uh, four, five, nine, and another four. Thirteen that they were just able to push in thanks to that play. The first also delivered four shots, then they take the bell tower, that's another five, and then through the boss, four more. So from 20 to 20, they pushed the ducks down to seven at this point. A big moment there for Team Liquid. Definitely taking a major lead, grabbing experience to almost a full level above their opponent, getting there in a few seconds here. They move in for Sappers, break down their bell tower as well on the bottom left. Now they have to continue to end this series, but right now they are in a good spot against the Ducks. Yeah, they're really in a fantastic spot, not only from an objective point of view, but also looking at the experience. Level 19 and a half versus 18 and a half. So it's not an only a level lead, it's how close they are to their Storm Talents. That's really the big part here. They would, they don't even have to fight at this point. They can just take it easy and wait until they have the experience, especially Dehaka, of course, has moved to the top lane right away, making sure that he gets that extra side so. I don't mind them trying to fight as long as the moment Ultimate Evolution comes in, they get the disengage. They want to make sure that they don't fight that here before 20 hits. They put some pressure on Eternal, trying to get the Ultimate Evolution to come out. There it goes. It does pop up. But Team Liquid pulls away straight to their four, and they play safe. Diaga gets another wave at the top lane and pushes in the end of four. 20 seconds. This is rough for the Ducks. Do you give up the altar and try to soak for this next altar for 20, or do you actually fight against the Storm Talent? Because that Storm Talent should hit by the time. Sport Billy loses the copy. The Ducks have to give it up. As much as it hurts, I just don't see it. Dehaka is in the mid lane now, 20 any moment. They have to move away from it, and they do. I like the choice. It's, it's a rough decision to make when you're this low on hit points. But what are you going to do? Without Abatha copy moving into a 19 versus 20 fight, you're not going to win it. So as much as this hurts and as much as it puts the Ducks into a we nearly lost now a position, you have to make that play. They make the play, but they also make another one on the top left as they work on the Bell Tower with Team Liquid moving on the bottom right side. They have opened this window to grab the Bell Tower and get the experience, which will put them closer to level 20, which will make defense much easier for them by the Sappers that will be pushing in. Yeah, and the Zappers are, the Zappers are there, and now they just have to push this one in. They could just push them back with ETC and, like, they have Horrify. This could get ugly fast. They could. We'll see if they're able to hit it here. Nurok on the right side will be the one to keep your eye on. Also, Blumby 2 can move in for a power slide into an engage. Stay away from the kill zone. Sport Billy will use his ultimate evolution to move in and help clear up the sappers for his team. And they will do so here as the sappers fall. They sacrifice the clone. The cooldown is not really too long, so they have a really good shot at having it ready later on again. Team Liquid is defending, and both of the teams have now hit the level 20, so it's at least a fight on even talent, so that's something that the Ducks have going for themselves now. But the Haka is working at the top bell tower already. This is the thing, Liquid only needs three shots. They're completely fine with four bell towers against four. The Haka moves in, they can take these fights. A good drag is all they need at this point. And uh, Gul'dan has not used Horrify yet, but there it is. And the Isolation should deliver a kill. Eternal is low and he is down. The Mosh Pit connects, but it is interrupted. The Palm hits, Blumby moves out. It's not triggered. And now we have a five versus four on the map and the bell tower. The altar has just spawned. Liquid moving back. They are trying to tap the fountain and the ducks have to sneak it as fast as they possibly can. They have to try here. Not an easy to storm boat and we have to have someone get blown up quickly here. Blumby comes in from the power slide though, finds Chris. The cleanse does come out. Nande is being controlled here by Blumby. Blumby being chased back right away. Curse Bullet comes out for the disruption on Wolf Joe. Blumby needs to go in. Blumby needs to go in and he just barely gets the interrupt here. 20 seconds until Arthas is back. Blumby himself is low. Palm is not ready. He goes down. Sport Billy's clone is gone. And a Wolf Joe is low. Splendor moves in. He wants to kill. He goes in once, twice, and drops him. Rhaegar down. They go for Chris. Yes, we see a kill against Greymane, but it doesn't matter anymore. Muradin is dead, and that only leaves Abatha on the field. Team Liquid goes for the altar and goes for the game. They'll go for the game here and get the victory over the Plain Ducks. Two to one right now, one away from winning the entire series. 
Team Liquid plays aggressive in the early game, playing in Ducks matchup until that mid game where they had that one big fight in the top right corner. And Team Liquid able to take that small lead and just slowly edge out a victory. They get the advantage, but this series isn't over by any means. Close calls mm -hmm. throughout every single map that we've seen so far. Liquid has the 2-1 now. And just again, if you tuned in a bit later, this is the most important match for both of these teams in Phase 2 right now. Team Liquid has won in the first part of Phase 2 with a 3-0 against the Playing Ducks. Which means that if Liquid today wins again, they are in the direct comparison on a 2-0 score, which is insanely important for them because with how the Liquid plays lately, there is a chance that at the end of the season, looking at the standing, we will find both teams on the same amount of matches won and lost. And then the direct comparison is the next criterion. So right now for Liquid, it is incredibly important to make this happen so that they move away from the Crucible. For the Ducks, on the other hand, a victory here would mean so much since they have a really good shot of moving out of the Crucible yeah. spots. Plain Ducks are kind of having to deal with them having such a poor early game in the uh, phase of phase two. Not being able to get the wins they really wanted to. They came out looking great on paper, but just couldn't get the victories. They kept changing up drafts. And as of late, the last four weeks, they've looked great in their matches. They've gotten a few wins here and there. They've gotten to a spot where it's like, hey, why are they even in the bottom two of Europe? So they got to get this victory here. And this is a spot where they can definitely do it. And you're seeing what they are poss what they are capable of, really. Look at them here against Team Liquid. They have been very close in the series. Every single match has gone down to the wire. Team Liquid has the advantage right now, but remember, we have the possibility for a couple more games in the series. It is a best of five. So getting ready for the next battleground, what do you expect here from the playing ducks? <laughs> The same that we've seen so far. I don't know what battleground choice they're going to make. I would love to see Dragonshire, for example. That seems to be a map where they have also shown great games. But at the same time, I'm not quite sure what map they're going to choose, but I expect them to play on the same level. They're doing well. Yeah. They have great fights. They have good decision-making. The rotations are good. It just always comes down to individual fights, uh, an ancestral hitting, for example, or missing. In the last one, they were forced into a few battles they didn't really want to fight. Then again, on Cursed Hollow, it was the exact opposite. Sure. They were good with the chasing so there's like a lot happening on both teams and it comes down to in to control during fights or maybe a, a, sh um, a call being made at some point i feel the ducks playing great today team liquid is currently a little bit better but this series is not over yet it is not over yet but what is currently happening here outside of the agc is we have those cheers coming in and we actually hit a very big goal this morning we are over 20 million cheers for the HEC, which means the Arcane Chaos Lizard, the Arcane Chaos Lizard has been unlocked. Yeah, so we unlocked the second one here. It's also, interestingly, over 9,000. And <laughs> the memes coming in. I like memes. Memes are pretty good. And Dragon Ball is pretty awesome, so shush. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hop in to map number four. Where are we going? It'll be Tomb of the Spider Queen, Team Liquid.